Seriously? Okay, excuse me. You have to go now. Okay, bye. <sighs> Hi! I need a beer. I don't even have a beer. <laughs> Welcome back to how to look at a full pantry and still think, ugh, there's nothing to eat. Last week we talked about tools, pots and pans and knives and boards, and this week we're gonna talk about, uh, tools. You know, like more edible tools. Just It's just tools all the way down. Let's just talk about pantry essentials, okay? Cat hair all over my counter. So you wanna learn how to cook, or you don't care about that and you just think I'm entertaining when I'm drunk and messing up in the kitchen. Regardless, if you're learning how to cook, there are a couple of ingredients that you should probably keep stocked in your pantry, in your fridge, your cabinet, your freezer, your drawers, I don't know. So you're not running to the store every time you need something, especially when it's in the middle of making something. Don't ask how I know. So without further ado, here are some things that I keep stocked in my kitchen and hopefully it will help you not to be an idiot like me. Rice, probably the thing that makes up just as much of me as water. And if you weren't surprised by this being first, then well, really, kudos to you for not seeing rice, man. That's just wonderful. The most common type of rice is white rice. It's completely processed white rice. Here I have jasmine rice, which is probably one of the most popular types of white rice in the Chinese culture. If you're going to get jasmine rice, make sure that you get one with this seal on it and the word Tai Ho Mali. I probably butchered the pronunciation of that. But that seal means that it's certified by the Department of Foreign Trade that it originates in Thailand and it is the real stuff. Brown rice, some people say that it causes cancer, but uh, as the kids say, YOLO, right? This is a big bag of haiga rice. For those of you who don't know, it's kind of in the middle. Brown rice is completely unprocessed, white rice is completely processed. This is somewhere in the halfway point. So if you can't decide, you can let this bag do the deciding for you. You don't have to get this stuff. This is cow roast rice. I use it for more Japanese applications such as sushi or onigiri. You can also use short grain rice, which is what most people use. You don't have to get this, but if you're interested in cooking stuff like that, Next up, you have probably two of the most important seasonings in the entire cooking world, salt and pepper. Note here that I have, I have salt all over the counter now. Kosher salt, critically important, and I'm not talking about that crappy table salt stuff. Kosher salt means larger flakes, and larger flakes means that it's easier to pinch and measure out exactly how much you need. Also to get all over your counter unnecessarily. And then you have black pepper. Get a pepper grinder. I don't care if it's a cheap one like this that comes from Costco that is part of the packaging. White pepper, generally very, very nice. It's not necessary if you're just gonna do like regular American style cooking, but for more Asian type application, probably better to get it. Just at least a little thing of this. And then of course you have various white powders for baking and or cooking. Mostly cooking, but if you're a baker, I'm not gonna judge you for that. We have Hanko Panko, Thick Sauce, Tony Montana's Ashes, a Def Leppard Wet Dream, and Cleaning Supply Alter Egos. I know that most of this stuff is used for baking, but I have used uh, uh, all of this stuff on a regular basis in cooking. Mm, moving on, aromatics. Here we have the absolute trifecta of Chinese cooking. We have vampire deterrent, green organic tear gas, and pureed Weasley. Over here we have yellow organic tear gas, probably one of the most common aromatics, Bugs Bunny fuel, and I am missing some celery. I ran out and I went to the store to get some and they were also out. So there must be a nationwide celery shortage. I'm sorry. For vegetables that are likely to get you invited to the cookout, we have beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes. Be okay, I don't actually cook with coffee beans. This is just for the sake of the joke and because I ran out of black beans. Now let's talk liquids, starting with oils. We have, yes we can, Ola oil, Popeye's girlfriend, Popeye's girlfriend before she met Popeye, and cave opening oil. Moving on we have instant Teflon, sour stuff, white, red, and rice, everyone's favorite, Asian blood, bee vomit, cock sauce, milk, the half blood milk, definitely not Franzia, and oyster blood. Now if you're a little more intent on Asian cooking like this channel is gonna follow, I would also recommend getting a bottle of dark soy sauce or black soy sauce or Kwong Hung Sung, it, it doesn't matter. Get some of this for coloring and flavor, but if not, and you have no idea what this is, and you probably never use it, then, you know, fine. I don't need you anyway. Also get some black rice vinegar as well, because this stuff is really good. Dairy for literally every application you could possibly think of, not just breakfast. And then of course you have your typical American prophylactics. I'm sorry, I mean condiments. Red sauce number 57? What the hell, man? Now be aware that herbs and spices can vary extremely widely depending on what type of cuisine you wanna cook. Now, if you're going to follow along with some of the cooking that I'm going to teach you, here are three recommendations that I have that I have used at least in the last couple of days. Soper salad, otherwise known as cilantro, good for garnishing or for flavoring at the very end. Curry powder for 
making curry, obviously, and Chinese Mrs. Dash, aka Five Spice Powder. This stuff is really, really versatile if you're learning to cook all sorts of different Asian cuisine. Definitely get some of this if you're following along with some of my recipes. Again, it's not mandatory. No matter what you're cooking, odds are likely that you're gonna need some stock or broth called for in any one of the recipes that you got. So I would definitely recommend getting some of this. So if you're not interested in keeping all that liquid around, you can invest in these. Better than bullion chicken and beef base. I would recommend getting both. That also applies to the stock and the broth. I think they make uh, vegetable bullion and or stock or broth as well, but uh, definitely get chicken and beef and or vegetable if you're in that sort of thing. And finally, the currency of Tinder, nudes. Or just noodles if you're boring. Pasta of your choice, elbows for macaroni and cheese, also get cheese. And Asian noodles of your choice. Now, I use these to make ramen, but there are thick noodles, thin noodles. Really, Megan Trainer would have a wet dream walking through the noodle aisle at my local Chinatown. Ugh. Those are a lot of the basic things that I have in my pantry and I use them to cook pretty much every week. Of course, there's a lot of things that I left out on purpose and there's probably something that I left out that I should probably have put in. Regardless of what it is, if you have something in your pantry that I probably missed, thank you very much. Let me know in the comments. We are building on our culinary skill set with the next couple of videos. We're gonna talk about knife skills and cutting aromatics and what aromatics to use and basic dishes. And I don't know, I haven't really decided any of it yet. Happy 4th of, well, that already happened. Until then, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.